Hello there, Carol Dockham here with Beautiful Faces Going Places Women's Success Network. And I am so excited today as we are here for a very special Empower Hour, um, all about courses, creating courses, course creators, education, educators. Um, it's all about, uh, you know, starting with that beautiful idea to actually creating it and then launching it. So I am excited to introduce uh, our special panel of experts here for Empower Hour at Beautiful Faces Going Places Women's Success Network. And I am gonna kick this off by introducing Callie Heiligenberg with Dignified Learning. Uh, Callie is a business development representative for Dignified Learning, where she tells Dignified Learning story and shares the positive uh, impact a dignified e-learning experience can have on organizations. She has previous experience as a junior instructional designer, which informs her understanding of how to make quality, engaging content in various types of formats. Callie has a background in business development and an understanding of the importance of effective e-learning from personal experience. She graduated with a BS in entrepreneurship and a minor in supply chain management, as well as experience studying abroad. Callie's personal experience with e-learning has made her an advocate for a dignified and respectful learning experience no matter the content or the audience. And she has with her today, Emily Miller. And Emily has more than 15 years of experience in the field of education. Uh, Emily is the co-founder of Dignified Learning after receiving a dual undergraduate degrees in history and secondary education and a graduate degree in literacy and secondary languages from the University of Cincinnati. She worked in public education as a school administrator curriculum director, instructional coach, and teacher, wishing to make an even greater impact. Emily joined Next Step, where she serves as the Vice President of Dignified Learning. Since joining the team, Emily has helped numerous businesses, uh, as well as schools and nonprofits, create custom e-learning experiences for their staff and their communities. Now we're here today to talk about course creation, right? Uh, experts and course creators uh, trying to figure out, you know, how do I package my expertise and how do I leverage technology? Um, so you have this great idea of creating this course and uh, having it a living, breathing course uh, or e-learning experience online, maybe on your website or, uh, or an offering, a webinar offering that you can uh, help your clients through some type of a transformation uh, process. But it's so important that you also consider and think about the marketing and the branding after you create that course. So I have invited Robin Anton here, who is a marketing strategist and launch coach. Uh, for the past 20 years, Robin has worked with household brands such as Microsoft, P&G, Reebok, Philips, creating programs that generated millions in sales. As a radio talk show host, Robin has spoken to uh, helping her. Whoop, as a radio talk show host, Robin has spoken to thousands of business owners, giving them tips and advice on launching and running their small businesses. Uh, she is currently taking her years of marketing and branding experiences and helping course creators how to make real money now, not later, using a unique combination of organic marketing and launch techniques that are rarely used in the industry. And she'll be giving us those tips here shortly. And lastly, I invited Michael Davis, speak, speaking CPR, uh, because it's so important that once you've created that course, right, uh, you wanna make sure that it's engaging uh, visually and verbally using the right words uh, to influence and impact uh, your students or your audience, right? So we invited Michael Davis here, who is a professional speaker. He works at the intersection of communication, leadership and influence to help business leaders, sales professionals and professional speakers who want to become more confident influential and inspirational presenters. Uh, Michael founded Speaking CPR to help his clients manage fear and anxiety about public speaking with a positive speaking mindset, to, to, to develop clear, concise, meaningful presentations which impact audiences and inspire them to take action. 
and to create memorable experiences with a dynamic delivery in your real voice. So please help me welcome Michael Davis, Robin Anton, Emily Miller, Kelly Heiligenberg here to talk about uh, creating courses for educators from what ideation creation and next steps launch. So I'm so excited to have uh, the three, the four of you here with us today to really talk about this. I'm passionate about the subject because I too love to help coaches excel online and in person. So let's kick this off with Callie and Emily. I'd love for you to tell us a little bit more about dignified learning, your services, your programs, and how you help your clients. Yeah, sure, Carol. I can get us started and just talk a little bit and then hand it over to Emily. Um, you know, at Dignified Learning, we love to work with your subject matter expertise as coaches and influencers and experts in whatever you do. And we take that subject matter expertise and really apply our educational best practices to create something that works for your audience and make sure that they receive your message the right way in a place that is dignified and they enjoy it. And um, we love to step into these spaces and work with different coaches and subject matter experts to, to create these things. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, when when we co-founded Dignified Learning, it was really out of a, a need that we saw, right? There's so much good expertise out in the world. And we we do this kind of peculiar thing um, where we we expect subject matter experts to design their own trainings, design their own courses. Um, and many of them do that well, but to to kind of our reason for existing, right, is because it's, that's really hard work. That is a profession that is a, a skill set in of itself, just being able to structure that information, let alone um, learn all of the different tool sets you need to build out a, a quality e-learning experience, right? And, and sometimes that can include graphics, visuals, animations, um, simulations, or games, right? So we really pride ourselves in being that one-stop place where you can just kind of drop your expertise on our doorstep and we, we take that, structure the information in a, in a way that can be absorbed, um, and then really take all that heavy lifting off of the subject matter expertise um, you know, shoulders and, and go ahead and, and build out that e-learning experience for them. So do, do you house the actual content then for them as well as help develop it? Um, that's a great question. We, we certainly can. We have a platform um, precisely because for um, a lot of the subject matter experts we've worked with, they're not experts in platform or platform was out of their price point. So if you want to use our platform, you're more than welcome to, but your custom course is your own. So you can, you can pick it up and move it to any platform uh, you want to. And if you decide to, to use our platform, that could be a temporary decision and you can eventually uh, choose to put it in a different platform if you desired. Great. That was a great question. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Um, and I love that the idea and the concept that, um, you know, you, you provide that structure, Emily, that you mentioned, um, and, you know, from an educational aspect, and then um, you can house it there at Dignified Learning or take that course and put it someplace else, right? And host it someplace else. So um, so the subject matter, matter expert actually gets to take it with them wherever, right? Uh, that's awesome. All right, Michael, let's talk about uh, speaking. I know I don't profess to be a professional speaker. <laughs> and sometimes I actually get a little nervous, Michael, when I'm in your presence, because I know that you that this is your profession, right? Uh, but is, yeah. this, is this why, Carol, because I do this? Hmm, I can't believe she said that. <laughs> um, exactly. Um, <laughs> but yes, the importance of, you know, creating that engaging presentation and uh, visually on camera, whether it's you're using vid videos or whether you're in person, you know, I, I know that you can bring out that charisma uh, in your clients or with your clients so that their, their content's in, engaging and people just want to listen in and lean in to learn more. Um, and then as 
uh, Robin and mentioned earlier, you know, you want them to actually take the, the second course, right? Or the third course, like keep, mm. keep going. So Michael, share some, sh so tell us a little bit about what you do with speaking CPR, how you help your clients, and then add that element of why it's important to course creators. Well, my work is to help business leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs become more confident speakers. And we do that by, as you mentioned in the introduction, making sure their heads on is thinking straight about this because we are naturally inclined to be afraid of speaking. And when I talk speaking, I'm not just talking keynotes. It could be you're standing up and speaking to three people for a sales presentation. You're in front of eight of your teammates in, in a business setting and you need to inspire them. We are wired to be afraid of those situations. So I work with mindset and then we help with structure to make sure you're giving enough information, but not too much, which is a big problem with a lot of presenters. They, they, you've all been to an event where you walk away feeling like you just stuffed yourself at a lunch buffet, except it's your brain that's stuffed. It's like, I can't take any more. And we don't know what to do with that. And then the last part is delivering authentically. Now, where this comes in and, and dignified learning is so good at this is breaking your material up into digestible bite-sized chunks. We need to do this as presenters, but they took one of my courses that was really attractive with its flat blue background and stick figures and Times New Roman font and actually made it look visually appealing and interactive. That's where we need company, we that have content, we need companies like Dignified Learning because they can make it a more fun experience through technology. I didn't know how to do it and I didn't want to. That's not what I do well. I'm good with stick figures, really good with those. Yeah, nobody wants to look at those after all. And by the way, they weren't animated stick figures. They just stood there. <laughs> so they add what I can do for speakers, they do for content. <laughs> Well, thanks, Mike. And we have to say, like, it was such a joy making your making your course because we were learning so much and it was such good information. Um, and even it, it, it's ironic because in your course, you talk about information overload. Right. Mm -hmm. And as we were going through it, one of the things we say is even subject matter experts who understand these principles have a hard time pulling back. Right. So some of that, that process for, for chunking that information and deciding what's too much, what's for another course, um, it, it really is, there's so much value in, in that being a collaborative effort with a subject matter expert. That's an excellent point, Emily. And when I work with speakers who are running a speaking business, I tell them in their speeches, don't overload information in your courses, don't, because Emily just mentioned second, third, fourth, fifth courses. Always think two or three courses ahead. Give your audience or your buyer enough so that they feel like, yes, this was a very good investment. I want more. Versus here's everything I've got. I'm going to stick it in one course. And in five years from now, when you haven't done that, because I gave you too much, maybe come back and, and invest right. in something else. Don't do that. Piece by piece by piece. Create raving fans by not overloading them. And Michael, I really think that that's true for whoever um, is presenting that information too. It seems less overwhelming when you yourself, the expert, break it down and say, oh, I only need to talk about this and this. And then the presentation becomes so much more successful and the e-learning is more joyful as you're going through it and everything. Right. Absolutely. One, one, oh, oh, go ahead. Someone has, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I mean, I really appreciate this comment because I think what we... Um, our coach on a lot is add value, add value, add value. And so we want to make sure that we are delivering enough value and like enough, you know, um, an abundance of value because that's what we want to do. You know, um, yes, we we're good at what we do and we want to get paid for it. But at the bottom line, you know, we really get that, that, um, surge from serving and we want to add value and we want to make sure that our, our clients and potential clients get the value that we promise them. And so I feel like that's really kind of a fine line to walk. And I hope I, I'm not sounding defensive at all because it's like, so is there a way or is there a formula that you use with your clients that teaches them how to 
make sure you're delivering the value that exceeds what that was expected. And it's not so much value that everyone's on information overload and it's too much information and it's not clear. And then we get confusing and so on. Yeah, of, I, oh, I love that. Oh, no, uh, go ahead. You can, I was just going to say. No, that I was just going to say one of the points of, of, of value, of adding value is keeping it so they're, you're not overwhelming. That's value right there. Don't overwhelm by keeping it very simplified. And you're, you want to give them the steps that get them the results. So not adding in information that they don't need or content that they don't need right at that point and keeping it very simplified and focused. But go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I was just going to say that's such a great question. And, you know, the I think most subject matter experts do kind of there, you become so competent in an area that you kind of lose sight of if I'm a beginner, where am I starting from, right? And what's going to be the goal, like, like we were just talking about with, with what a learner is going to do at the end of the learning experience. And that's it's kind of a, a forever conversation, but realistically, most people um, can't take in a lot of information at one time and make drastic shifts, right? So depending on what your content is, what, what kind of behavior change is going to be attainable for most people? Because learners are ultimately going to be repeat customers, want to come back to your material if they experience success. So I would just make the argument of how do you make success attainable? Um, what's, what is that like micro goal that's going to make a difference in somebody's life and uh, be, be attainable within a, a relatively short period of time. I love that point. Yeah, I do too. Uh, one, one of the biggest challenges I have with speakers who come in and say, I'm going to change the world. No, you're not. <laughs> okay. Here's why I say that. It's, I love the aspiration. Don't get me wrong. We do not make massive change in people's lives because people don't change that way. One of the best pieces of advice I ever got in my life was to change small, change often. Create new habits. And as speakers, as course creators, as coaches, our job is to give people one or two little bites and say, now go do this. Create a new habit. Now come back and do something else and something else. I always talk about speaking and storytelling is an evolutionary process. You never get to the finish line ever. You just get better and better. And that's not just true in speaking. It's in everything each of us does. I know, Robin, you work with, with, with clients. They don't come in 30 days later, massively change, right? They don't. It's just trying yeah. to get them to do some, one thing. Right? Have you ever tried to just change the order you put your socks on in the morning? It feels really weird for about two weeks. That's how all change is. So we got to stop thinking, my course is going to change everything about them. No, it's going to get them started in a new direction. And then we'll offer more down the road. Right. I, I love that. Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, yeah, I've never really thought about how I put my socks on in the morning. So, <laughs> but I do love that you said change, change small, change often, you know, baby steps and, and make that progress. So uh, Robin, you are a launch coach, right? Marketing and branding strategist. And I loved, I read your bio on LinkedIn. I absolutely love that you said something about course creators, these subject matter experts and how they, you know, they create, you know, they've got a fabulous idea, right? They create their course. Um, and then and then what, right? And then they've all been told, you know, you need to uh, launch a podcast show. Uh, what else? You need to write a book. You need to pre-record your material. So all of these uh, steps that you need to do right. to create a successful course. So tell us a bit about more how you help your clients. Okay. So I do. I help um, aspiring course creators and coaches, trainers, an expert, right? I help them to launch a course or program online from scratch. So they can work with Emily and, and Callie getting a program together. Like once we've decided what they're doing, then I would send them to you to help maybe clarify certain aspects of it or to put it on your, your platform. But what I help them do is figure out what it is they want it to offer. What is their irresistible offer? And it has to be something that people want and need. And then I do this, like you mentioned, without what I, the very first thing I tell everybody when I meet them is I say, stop doing whatever you're doing that isn't bringing in money. Doing a podcast, stop your podcast. If you're blogging every day, stop blogging. If you're sending out emails, stop, stop doing whatever isn't bringing in money. 
and I have them focus specifically on, a, on the program that I'm working on because I've been in marketing for 20 years and I've been trying online marketing for a really long time. And it wasn't until about a year and a half ago that I it all came together and I figured it out when I found my marketing coach. And she explained, right? I'm, I've been in marketing right now. Like, I don't need a coach. I can do this, right? But you can't. You have to find somebody who's been there and done that. It just, it's kind of just the best way to, to run any kind of business is to get that coaching, that coach, or any anytime you want to do to solve a challenge, right? You need to find somebody who's been there and done that. I mean, that's what we kind of all seek out anyway. You go seek your friends and family and, and coworkers that have done something, right? When you're trying to try some trying something new. So that's what I did. And what I've learned in this process is when you're launching a program, you need to, most people they've been told, go out there and, and create the freebies and do a low ticket offer and all these um, things that just kind of keep them busy and take a really long time to build their business. So the first thing I do is say, stop doing that. And we're going to flip your value ladder. And I want you to create a program that is $1,000, $5,000, $10,000 that your people can, that you can create as a small group program, as opposed to trying to do the evergreen, I'm going to make money while I sleep program. That can't necessarily, sometimes it works, but in most cases it will not work. Your first program needs to be a coaching program that's high ticket so that you're really close, work, working closely with your, your prospects or your clients. This is where you see the results. When you're selling a low ticket offer, you could get 100 people to, to buy it and two people might finish it. But when they're paying you $1,000 or $5,000 to take your program, they're going to show up, they're going to do the work, you're going to see results. And that's going to help you then to move down your value ladder and offer less of you and more of just the digital aspect of your program. Does that make sense? So I don't even have them, they don't necessarily have to have a course pre-recorded. I say you can record your live weekly meetings. I teach you how to set it all up in, in a course. And then with your case, as far as like Emily and Callie, I do encourage them to record modules once they've kind of gotten rolling so that it's easier for you to then meet with them on a weekly basis, go over the modules, understand what it is you're supposed to work on that week, and then keep, have yourself available to your clients. But the main thing is I teach them how to flip their value ladder to start up here at the top. I teach them how to flip their focus. So a lot of times people focus on adding value. And this is back to that question at the beginning. When you're, when you're marketing your program, you don't necessarily add value. You want to add a different perspective. You want to be new and different. You want to be the fastest, easiest, and simplest way for them to get the result. If you continue to add value, they're going to keep going for your freebies. They're going to keep trying to find out, well, what can I get for free? What can I get for free? And, and what happens if you give them just a little bit of information, they go out and try to do it on their own. And then they fail. And they think, well, she didn't know what she was talking about. So the idea is to get them to, if you, you want to flip through your value ladder. I teach people how to flip people, their pr prospects perspectives. And then I teach them how to flip your focus. So I want you to focus um, on like somebody that you have, have, instead of doing like the Facebook mark or uh, Facebook ads, doing the freebies. Um, I teach, if this is all old school marketing. I teach you to focus on marketing your launch program or your conversion program. So you need to, Understand, you need to understand you can't just like I have somebody who marketed 100 podcasts. She said, I had 100 podcasts and no one bought my program. I, she had a course tied to it. I said, Well, what was your conversion program? What did you do? How did you launch it? She's like, Well, what do you mean? I go, Well, how did you launch it? She's like, I, I did my podcast. I said, That's marketing your course. You need to market your launch. So you need to market like a five day challenge, a three day challenge, something that lets you build that know, like, and trust factor. And then that's how you get them in there. They get to know you. And then they want to buy your course and you move forward that way. So those are the three areas that I focus on. I know that's a lot. <laughs> and I talk I fast. Not, no, it's great. Yes, <laughs> Kelly, did you have something that you wanted to add? And I love that um, just, just the way you do it. And you, you really focus back on uh, like marketing 101, right? Back to the basics. Yes. yes. And then creating these opportunities or experiences to develop that no like and trust factor so that they want more. Right. Yes. So many people just start pretty simple. <laughs> yeah. They think that they can just market themselves and people will come buy their stuff. It doesn't work that way. You need to get them into a program, work with them, showing them, show them what you can do, let them get to know you, understand how you work. And then they want to buy into your program. Makes it a lot easier sale. That's for sure. 
Well, and I love Robin that you talked about how one that you had a coach yourself. So you had somebody who had that perspective and that experience, because I think everybody needs that extra hand, that extra support, somebody that has done it, like you said, and is able to give you that perspective when you're stuck in your bubble. And I also love that you are valuing your clients, you know, propositions, because I think people tend to undervalue what they have, or they're trying to give away a lot because everybody has big hearts and they want to. And it's, it's hard. Simple. It's hard, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I hear so many people that, I mean, they just start giving stuff away and they're like, I don't understand why no one's buying from me now. <laughs> I'm like, well, cause you gave them all this free information. They think they can do it on their own. And it's, it's kind of a dangerous, it's a, it's a fine line. You do want to show that you're an expert. So you do give away at, you know, you do add value in the things that you do, but you don't give them all of the details because otherwise they're going to try to do it on their own. And it gets, it's pretty scary because then you know they're not going to succeed. And it's it's a kind of a sad situation because they'll come to you six months later, hopefully, and say, this isn't working. And I'll say, well, I can tell you why you need a coach. <laughs> you need someone who's working with you every day and talking to you. But yeah. That's such a good point. I mean, we talk a lot in Dignified Learning about the learner's journey and making sure that your course is focused on the learner, not on the information. And what you're talking about there is really like that emotional support. So how do you start that engagement off and build credibility as the subject matter expert? And then how do you plan for that in your course when you're not there, right? When they're going through an asynchronous experience on their own, how do you make it attainable? Um, and like you said, not, not inundating with that information, but like thinking through really practically what is somebody going to need every step along the way not to be discouraged? Absolutely. Yeah, one, one thing I think is really funny. One of my clients told me um, he has four small children and he's like, Robin, he goes, I'll be, I watch, I, so my program starts with like a 30 day kickstart and it's a video of me for like 15 to 20 minutes talking about what they need to do, why, showing them around. And the kids will come in and they're like, oh, dad's talking to Robin and they'll leave the room. <laughs> oh, he's talking to Robin. Like, so they think I'm there live. And so you kind of build that rapport because I'm always like, hey, welcome to day one and welcome to day 14. And so that's how, you know, with video, like Michael and speaking, I, I'm sure that that's a, a big part of what he's doing is you try to make it as personable as possible. And that's kind of what I've done. And that's kind of how I encourage my coaches to do the same exact thing that I do with my clients. Yeah, if, you, if you're watching this and watching the recording, go back and watch what Robin talked about with the marketing. There's so many gimmicks out there right now. It, we've got to go back to the basics that connect with humans on a deep level, earn the trust. We live in the most untrusting society I've ever experienced in my life, the times. Um, and the, we've got to break down that, that trust factor real fast and connect. And the way that Robin, you said it, I thought was just brilliant. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Michael. You're absolutely right. Um, and I think that is one of the things that I love about uh, uh, really technology in the online world. It is a great way to get your message out into the world, right? Uh, to be genuine and authentic and uh, de deliver that value. Um, but on a genuine level so uh, so that you can establish that no like and trust factor and people want to learn more, right? Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the floor for Q&A. So um, if we have anyone in our audience that has a question, I know we have Teresa Vermillion here, Lighter Life Coach, and Brenda Aveyard, who is a business strategist, sales coach, uh, and an amazing speaker as well uh, here. So this is a great opportunity to ask any questions or contribute to the conversation. I know um, I, I absolutely love Brenda as a sales strategist, um, and I know she would have something to offer regarding that value ladder and your proposition. So um, I'm going to open up the floor for Q&A, and Robin, Callie, Emily, if you have anything else that you'd like to add to the conversation, uh, the floor is open. You know, I think that mentioning the value ladder, I think is a very, very good point for clients and people starting businesses. Everybody wants to start an evergreen course. I want to do my business online and I want to have charge $35 a month and I want everybody to come every month. And that's a great idea, but it's not a great idea when your list is 100 people. 
and you don't have mass numbers to market to. And I, I agree with you going back to the basics of how to build relationships through networking and learn the sales process and how you build that relationship with the buyer is so important. And education is important too. But sometimes when you're a coach, and I'm speaking to coaches right now, is that you start by building one-on-one -on -one clients and building relationships and teaching what you know and supporting people where they are. And when you come time, you have to have some clients before you have a course in my estimation, and it has to follow a procedure. And if you're going to have a course, you best know how to present yourself. Correct, Michael? Because if you get up there and you apologize for whatever you're doing, it, it blows all of your credibility. Uh, I was at a networking meeting once and the moderator started out by apologizing that I don't know what I'm doing yet. And that's very common. I see that in networking groups sometimes. So when you when you apologize for something that you don't know, people don't always they don't know what you know and what you don't know. You have to be able to bring them into you, build the relationship before they they will listen to you. And you don't do that by apologizing before you do it. And it's and it happens, doesn't it? Yeah. And I would I would think being authentic is what I encourage people. Be yes, authentic yes. and transparent. So you don't say, well, I've been a coach, you know, don't lie about what you've been doing. Don't act like it's more than what it is. Be very honest with them. When I first started my coaching program, I said, You guys are my first group through. I said, You're and we're gonna work really hard and you're gonna get to where you wanna go. Mm -hmm. And they were like, This is great, let's do it. I mean, as long as you're authentic, you're going to attract the right people. And that's how I, that's how you end up working with your dream clients. And when you come from like the corporate world, and then you get to go into this type of online business for coaching, it's just, it's an amazing experience. You end up becoming really, not that you're not friends with the people that you work with in corporate world. I'm not saying that I have really good friends, but it's just a different experience when you're working with somebody that you really, truly feel like you're becoming friends with and they DM you and you can't wait to help them do what they're doing. And you jump on a call and it's just a really good experience being authentic. And I'm like I said, I told them I'm this is my first experience with it when I started. And and that was I think that's very important. I never said I don't know what I'm doing. I said this is my first experience and there's a difference. Right. But yes, there's a huge difference because people's confidence is low. They don't know how to present themselves as Michael teaches them how to do. So in that they get nervous and instead of stopping to think about what they're going to say next, they add extra words or they apologize and they don't give themselves time, time to think about what they're doing. And that's a lot of preparation, how you present yourself. Yeah. This is a really good conversation in, I get a lot of that when I work with newer speakers, they, they talk about how nervous they are. And I have to remind them, first of all, you were asked to speak for a reason. Mm -hmm. Secondly, there's this myth that audiences are just waiting for us to fail. Oh, they can't wait. <laughs> so I always turn around them and say, now, let me ask you a question. The last time you went to an event, now, of course, this is all pre-COVID. Did you get in your car, fight traffic, pay parking? fight inclement weather, fight audiences to go find a good seat and sit there and hope. I hope the speaker is lousy because I got nothing better to do with my time. No, they don't want that. They want you to succeed because every time we speak, and again, not just on a stage, but with prospective clients, they have a problem that they need help with. And you're the person that can help them solve it. And if you ever get really intimidated, remember this, this. I wish I could take authorship for this, but I can't. It's a woman named Cindy Bidar who said to a third grader, a fourth grader is a genius. <laughs> yeah. As long as you know a little bit more than the audience, they respect. In fact, they're in awe of you if you can get up and speak in front of them because most people think, oh my God, I could never do that. They are in awe of the fact that you can stand up in front of them and speak. Give them something of value and don't worry about mistakes and all that. They don't want you to fail. They want you to succeed. That helps with imposter syndrome as well, right? Yes, you only yes. have to be a grade ahead, right? In order to help true, somebody true. to achieve something. And as long as you're honest about that and you don't act like you're further ahead than where you are, be honest where you are and authentic about where you are. And then you don't have to feel like you're an imposter. Like, well, hey, let's do this. Let's figure this out. 
right? You let them know where you are. And this, you can say, hey, these things happened to me. This is how I did it. This is how my clients are doing it right now. This is a great way for you to try it, right? And that, I think that's key for imposter syndrome because a lot of people feel that too. And that's what even causes the speaker anxiety because they feel like they're an imposter. Well, good plan. And to go back to what Brenda said about apologizing, and I have a good friend, Kay Fittis. Some of you I know know Kay. Yeah. She's a fabulous yeah. speaker, good friend for a long time. She taught me that women presenters have a lot of these issues, especially with the apologizing. Well, what, what loses your credibility is not the mistake. It's the apology. Mm -hmm. We're not looking for perfection. We want connection with you. I love that. We're all, we're all human. All right, go make a mistake. In fact, we, we want the mistake, not the mistake prone, but we <laughs> like the speaker who occasionally flubs up because that makes them just like us versus I'm speaker man and my hair is perfect. My suit's perfect. And in my life, oh, it's been perfect. <laughs> I'm not connecting with you. That's not real. So don't worry about it. Go up there. Don't be speaker woman, speaker man. Just go up there. Be authentic. Mm -hmm. And if you make a mistake, who cares? They're not going to remember the mistake if you provide value. Well, and I think that's part of even meeting the audience where they're at, you know, stepping into their shoes and reminding them that you were there once. And it's important to really notice them and and support them in any way that we are doing that whether it's through speaking through marketing through course design you know that they are the important person in this in this space i think you're right callie because you, we don't do these hard things alone you know we go to people to help us in areas that we are not we do not have the expertise and we just don't do it alone. And if we try to do it all alone, we're really hindering our growth because there is always someone who knows a little different way, maybe a little better way to connect with, to accomplish what you're set up, what you've set out to do. And I think as coaches for Robin and I, it's working with our people where they are and helping them accept where they are and how they're going to go from this box to this box. And it's a painful journey sometimes, but if you try to do it alone, it's slower and it's more painful. <laughs> believe us, because we, we believe in coaches. I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars with coaches because to be a coach Ever, you need to be coached too. You know, I mean, that's why the CEOs of companies have coaches because the top has to have someone to support and keep them accountable and help them get to the next level also. And there are plenty of people for everyone. So that's why authenticity is so very, very important in determining courses. I remember when I did my first course when I was a coach, um, several years ago. And I said to my coach, I've decided it's time for me to have a six week program. And she said, great. So um, tell me more. I said, well, I'm, I'm almost done writing the outline for it. She goes, okay. And I said, when I get that done, I'll go over it. She said, you're ready to go now. You know, she said, send me your outline so far. And so when we had our call the next time, she said, Brenda, why don't you do the first week and then do the second week? She said, because when I look at your outline for six weeks, you have enough material for six months. You won't get it in and you're not going to have the end point that you want. It's your first time. Go do the first one. See how it goes. See how they react. See if they're overwhelmed because you can't teach people this much in six weeks. So, I mean, it's really important to discuss with your coach or with your, um, you know, content developer or, you know, someone who specializes in content and courses because we just don't know what we don't know. And it's okay. Callie, do they, or, do you, or Emily, do you guys have like a specific amount of time, like for segments? Like, do you say, I know like 13 minutes is used to be the, the time frame people would watch a video. Like, do you know that, have that information or what do you suggest to people when they're creating a, a course? Yeah, so it's, it, it really depends. It, it's individual, right. but um, our rule of thumb is that most videos need to be between 90 seconds and three minutes. 
um, and, and not to exceed five minutes. And that is really out of um, a couple of data points out of, out of some research, right? When it comes to the sustained attention span for most learners, and then also the, the ability for the learner to have the stamina to keep going throughout the course. It's better to have uh, five short videos than one long video in terms of like that mindset of, am I achieving? Am I, am I getting the check mark that I'm progressing and moving along? Check marks are nice, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Oh my gosh. I absolutely love that. I had no idea three to, you know, three to five minutes, right? Maximum attention span for uh, course videos. So um, I, I just took notes on that. So when I create my course, I will be in the know. Um, thank you guys so much for sh uh, sharing your expertise, joining us for Empower Hour. Um, I would love for us just to go around this Zoom room here. And uh, if our audience or viewers would like to learn more about what you do at Dignified Learning at Speaking CPR, um, if you are interested in marketing and launching your course, marketing and branding, uh, connect with uh, Robin here. If you're interested in sales strategy, you've got Brenda Aviard and Lighter Life Coach Teresa Vermillion. So let's go around the Zoom room. And uh, I'd love for you just to share where can everyone connect with you? And Robin, you're on the main stage here, so take it away. Okay. Um, really, I would probably just encourage you to find me on Facebook. It's Robin Goltheis, Anton, A-N-T-O-N, and it's Robin, R-O-B-Y-N-N. -N. Um, I also have a link on my Facebook page to one of my programs. You can kind of watch a video. It's like a 30-minute training session that you might be interested in if you're really getting ready to start a course. It kind of gives you some ideas of what you need to be thinking about. Um, and then just, yeah, reach out to me on Facebook. That would be great. You can even DM me or just friend me. I'm kind of at my limit right now. I need to, I need to like, let go of a few friends to get more in, but you can message me or actually, like I said, watch my link there um, to watch or get, get to my link to watch my video. And I hope to hear from you guys. And really, if, if you're just starting out, it's a great, this is a great way just to kind of see where should I go and what should I do? Whether it's with me or somebody else, at least let you know where you should go. Awesome, thank you. Callie, take it away. Yeah, so great place to get connected with Dignified Learning is to go to our website, um, dignifiedlearning.com. But I love to talk to anybody and everybody who just has an inkling of a course inside them. And you can always reach me at Callie, C-A-L-L-I-E, at dignifiedlearning.com for um, my email. Awesome. Thank you so much, Callie. How about you, Emily? Likewise, um, dignifiedlearning.com, but my email is emily at dignifiedlearning.com. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, Michael, take it away. Well, I prefer LinkedIn, but I have a name it's fairly common. And if you go on LinkedIn and try to find me, it'll take you about a day. So just contact <laughs> me, contact me, Mike at speakingcpr.com. But I like LinkedIn because that's where I post on a daily basis. And a lot of uh, the value that we tried, we talked about earlier that we try to provide there, but happy to talk with you, Mike at speakingcpr.com. Thank you so much, Michael. And you're absolutely right. I know when I uh, I shared our Empower Hour on LinkedIn earlier this morning, and I you know wanted to tag you, and there were so many Michael Davises. So uh, you're absolutely right. All right, Brenda, I would love for you to introduce yourself, only because I just think you're amazing, Brenda. Brenda Aviard is on our success team here at Beautiful Faces Going Places Women's Success Network. She will actually be presenting at our next Lunch and Learn networking event on March the 30th at the Doubletree Inn in Greater Cincinnati. So um, if you'd like to explore more about uh, mastering your sales, um, this would be the Lunch and Learn for you to attend. So Brenda, I'm going to pass the mic over to you. Okay, great. I'm Brenda Aviard. Let me tell you, I think that most people have, if they're not making sales, it's because they don't have enough leads or 
they don't know the sales process. And it sounds complex, but it really isn't. So at the Lunch and Learn, if you're in the Dayton or Cincinnati market, please join us that day. I'm going to do a little bit of a workshop format so that we're actually leaving with some written ideas to go back and build your, your lead base, because that's where it all starts. And knowing that being in sales is really being in serving. I met with a, a gal the other day and her boss about her struggles and moving forward. And it was really interesting because it isn't, it isn't what you, it is what you say and do, but it's how you feel about you also. So if you're, if you can come to that lunch and learn, it's so great to go to something like this live again. And that's what I'm most excited about. Um, if you want to reach out to me personally, you can go to a gift from brenda.com as with some others here. If you try to spell ABR, it'll never happen, but go to a gift from brenda.com and you'll have an opportunity to, to, two things, get my white paper on the eight mistakes entrepreneurs make and how to recover from that. Or you'll be able to click the link and go to my calendar and schedule a complimentary um, number one business challenge call with me and I will help you with your number one business challenge. But we're also going to be doing business spotlight Friday. Right? That's right. Yeah. We are. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Yes. Okay. Friday, 12 o'clock business spotlight. Yeah. yeah, taking the time to do what you're doing today by watching these professionals in their field is where it all starts and learning. So taking notes, remember writing is learning. I'm going to shut up now. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Brenda. And Teresa, I'd love to introduce you. Uh, Teresa Vermillion, Lighter Life Coach. It's not about the cupcake. She is a recent number one bestselling author on Amazon with uh, Micro Shifts. And Teresa is also on our success team. You can check out her bio on our business directory at beautifulfacesgoingplaces.com. So Teresa, you've got the mic. Oh, thank you. Wow. Um, and thank you everybody for being here and sharing your expertise. This has been amazing and um, just really valuable. And I appreciate your time and your expertise, your education. Uh, so yeah, I am the Lighter Life Coach. I created this, um, I created my coaching business so that I could help guide women from being overwhelmed and overweight to a lighter body and a lighter life. And um, much to what Brenda just said also, it is so much more than what we're doing, it's why we're doing it. And that is really um, all of our behavior choices and behavior changes are motivated by feelings and thoughts. And that is where the magic happens. And that's what I focus on with my clients as well. So Lighter Life Coach, you can find me on Facebook at Ter Teresa Vermillion. Uh, Lighter Life Coach is my business page. And you can also find me at it's not about the cupcake.com for my free guide there or lighterlifecoach.com. I'd love. Does that mean awesome. we have the cupcake? Is that what that means? Pardon? Does that mean we get to have the cupcake? You do. If you want the cupcake, eat the cupcake. Just know why you're eating it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Now, if you're you. less numbing your feelings, then you might want to choose differently. If you're celebrating life and it's time to eat cupcakes, then that's okay. And if you're numbing your feelings, that's okay too. Just know that that's what it's about. That's cool. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much, Teresa. Well, I hope that uh, everyone here found some value today. I, as I mentioned, I am passionate about hosting this once a month Empower Hour, where we bring on uh, experts, we pick a topic, we bring on the experts in their field and really deliver some value bombs and have a great conversation on a topic. And today was all about uh, creating a course, right? Educators, course creators, uh, going from the idea, you know, we all have ideas, right? Uh, going from that idea to actually creating your course, to marketing, launching it, and selling it. So as you can see, there are so many different moving parts of creating a course. So um, please connect with any of our uh, expert speaker panelists here. Uh, we've got Emily, Michael, Teresa, Brenda, Callie, Robin, thank you so much for your time. Um, I hope you had some takeaways. I'm going to say my biggest takeaway is 
um, you know, we all need help, right? We all need a support system, a network. And uh, that's why we have coaches here, right? So that we can reach that next level of success. So if you are looking for education, visibility, connections, um, I invite you to join us on any of our programs. They're all listed on our website at beautifulfacesgoingplaces.com. Uh, I love connecting and meeting new faces. So uh, come and join us. And I just want to say thank you. Have a great day. And I cannot wait to see you all again soon. Take care. Thanks, Carol. Bye. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye, you guys.